Hi, welcome to Driving TV and I hope you are well. For you to pass the driving test, you need to know why learners are failing the driving test. It's very important for you to understand why most learners are failing the driving test. In this video, I have covered nine reasons why learners are failing the driving test. And I have made nine episodes, each episode explaining a reason why learners are failing. So you'll have all nine episodes in one video, which is on this one, giving you everything you need to know about why learners are failing the driving test. By watching this video, hopefully you'll understand exactly why learners are failing and hopefully you'll learn from them and that you don't fail your driving test. Hopefully by watching this video, you will pass your driving test. Let's start the lesson. Okay, so let's start by watching episode one and then all of the other eight episodes. So in total, in this video, like I said, you will have all nine episodes all in one place for you to understand nine reasons why learners are failing the driving test. Let's start with episode one. Now let's look at some of the problems the learners are failing on for steering, okay? In the test, you need to demonstrate to the examiner that you are having proper control of the steering. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the problems the learners are facing and because of those problems they are failing the test. Number one is that imagine this is the road and you want to go left. Okay, this is your car. You want to go left. Now the problem many learners they are facing is they are not looking at the corner. First of all make sure you look at the corner because your steering will depend on this corner. Okay, if you steer too early on this one, you'll cut the corner. And also, if you steer too late, you're going to end up on the other side of the road. Okay, so it is important when you are turning left, look for the corner and according to the corner, do your steering. Okay, so for example here, you would go about here, about here, then you will start to steer. Because if you do it here, you'll cut the corner. And if you do it here, you will end up going on the other side of the road. Okay, so it is important for you to look for the corner and according to the corner, do the steering. Okay, my advice to you would be look for the corner. If you think the road is too narrow, the road you are going in, reduce your speed. Make sure just before the corner, obviously, you will go to second gear and the speed is going to be 10. If the road is too narrow, then around here, go down under 10, go to first gear and do the corner. Okay, the best way for you to control the steering round going left is to look for the corner and according to the corner, according to the size of the road, reduce your speed and steer so you end up on your side of the road not too much and not too less. Now let's talk about going right. On going right, obviously you look at the mirror, you put the signal on and you position yourself, okay? And in regards to steering, you want to make sure that you don't do it too early and you cut the corner, or you don't do it too late and you do a swan necking, we call it. So basically you're doing that, okay? You don't want to do it too early where you cut the corner or you don't want to do it too late where you are missing the junction and then coming back to go in okay you need to time it look for the junction that you want to go in and you need to go around here and then make your turn into your side of the road okay now one of the main problem by learners is when the examiner asks them to stop somewhere safe on the left now this is the problem for many learners they fail the test is because Every time the examiner is asking them to stop somewhere safe on the left, they stop, but they are hitting the pavement. Okay, so make sure you steer enough so that you don't go and hit the pavement. You want to go nicely and you stop close to the pavement and you don't hit the pavement. Many learners, they fail the test because they're hitting the pavement and that's why they're failing the test. The other problem is you're driving here. And there are parked cars here okay now when you see parked car here the learners what they do is they're driving as normal and for them to go around this parked car they're doing it too late they're steering too late and they are too close to that car 
okay you need to steer early so you go around that that's one of the problem the other problem is when they see a car coming from the opposite okay so the learner is stopping here okay they stopped for this car here which is good when they go they looked at the mirror and before they go they're steering so bad that they're going too close to that car and then they're going around and you'll fail your test for that okay so when you see part cars going round part cars make sure your steering is good you're not going too close as you go around part cars okay so these are the problems where learners are failing for steering in the test let's look at those in practice so for you to go left, so imagine you want to go left on the road coming up on the left here, okay? So first thing you want to do is make sure you know what type of corner you are dealing with. Because if you don't, then you're going to either hit the corner or you will end up on the other side of the road. So according to the corner, you decide what kind of steering you will be needing, okay? So look for the corner. This is your driving. And look for the corner. That's the corner. That's the turning you are making, okay? So look for the corner. What kind of corner is this this is a tight corner so you don't want to do steer too early because if you do you will hit the pavement okay same time if you do the steering too late what's going to happen you're going to end up on the other side of the road which you don't want you don't want to go on the other side you want to end up on your side of the road okay so you don't want to cut the corner same time you don't want to go on the other side you want to make sure you end up on your side of the road as you steer now you want to go right okay so this is you are driving and you want to go right into the road over there you want to make sure that you end up on your side of the road you don't cut the corner okay so you're driving as normal on your position and before making the turn look for the position you need to go in look on your side of the road you don't want to cut the corner you want to go a little bit further and you make the turn and you end up on your side of the road this is your side that's not your side and you don't want to hit the pavement on the other side either you want to make sure you go in to your side of the road which is there now going around part cars okay we've got plenty of part cars around here in this road you want to make sure that you don't go too close to part car okay and then when you go around you're not steering early so for example this part car you don't want to go too close and then you are steering too late okay you want to make sure that you plan early and you don't go too close to part cars when you're going around okay now here as you can see i have a car coming so there's a part car on the left so i go and i wait for them now while i wait i don't want to go too close and I need to stop in a way so that when I go round again, I'm not too close, okay? So you don't want to go too close like that and then steer last minute as if you are going to hit that part car, okay? For example, here again, I have another car coming ahead, as you can see. So I'm going to be waiting for that car. When I wait, I will go in and stick my nose out early, okay? Early. If I go too close to that part car, I will be either hitting or as if I am hitting that car. I want to be early so that I don't go too close to that part car. Okay? And this is the problem for many learners is that when they are driving in a road where there are a lot of part cars, okay? And when they wait for the oncoming traffic and and they need to stop behind a car, what they do is they are going too close to that part car. And then like here now i need to see early okay if i go too close i will be hitting that part car okay one of the problem of learners is when the examiner asks them to stop somewhere safe on the left for example here the examiner said stop somewhere safe on the left we looked at the mirrors put the signal on and then when you go and stop make sure you don't hit the pavement many learners when they are stopping on the left they are hitting the pavement okay so make sure you don't do that this is a common problem for many learners is when the examiner said stop on the left they look at the mirror they put the signal on and then as they go in to the pavement they are steering and they are hitting the pavement on the left and this is a problem for learners and welcome to episode two on reasons for failing the driving test in the uk series 
And in this episode, we are talking about not having control of the car when moving off. So if you don't move the car safely, the examiner will fail you for that. So in this video, I'm going to share with you where the learners are making the mistakes when they are moving off. Okay, so let's start the lesson. Stalling and rolling back. Many times the learners stopped on the left, maybe on the traffic light or at the end of the road, or maybe somewhere safe on the left. Before they move off, they stall the car and then they are late on putting the brake on or they don't put the handbrake on and the car starts to roll back. You will fail for that for moving off. Okay, so when you stop somewhere safe on the left or on a traffic light or at the end of the road, before you move off, if you stall the car, make sure you put the brake on quickly so the car doesn't roll back. Because if it does roll back, you will fail your test for that for moving off. Next, you repeat stalling. So throughout the test, you keep on stalling the car. Maybe once you stall the car and you put the brake on quickly, put the handbrake on and the car didn't roll back the examiner probably will forgive you for that. But if you keep on stalling the car and then you restart again and then move off again, if you repeat the stalling, you will fail your test for that for moving off because you keep on repeating, then it's not a mistake anymore. Then you have a problem of moving off. And this is why you will fail your test for repeating stalling. And this will be for moving off. Next, stalling the car many times on one occasion which means that for example maybe you stop on the left or maybe you've gone to the end of the road or maybe you are on a traffic light and you stopped before you move off you keep on stalling so you stall once put the handbrake on safely and then before you move off again you stall again so you keep on repeating on the same occasion you will fail your test for that for moving off so make sure you don't repeat stalling the car on one occasion moving off without selecting a gear and the car starts to roll backwards. So for example, you stopped maybe on the left, maybe on the traffic light, or maybe at the end of the road. Before you move off, you forget to select the first gear, okay? And you're trying to move off without a gear, which means the car starts to roll back. If it does, you will fail your test for that. So make sure when you stop, before you move off, make sure you select first gear before you move off because if you don't the car will roll back and if it does you will fail for moving off so these are the reasons why the examiner will fail you for moving off so make sure that every time you stop somewhere safe on the left or at the end of the road or on the traffic light make sure that the car doesn't roll back make sure that you have enough gas or you do the clutch control right so that the car doesn't stall if you keep on repeating stalling, you will fail your test for that. Remember, if you stall the car once, it doesn't mean it's an automatic fail. So if you do stall once and the car didn't go back, don't give up. Make sure that you don't give up and make sure you restart safely by putting the handbrake on, selecting the first gear, then try to move off. Okay, but if you keep on doing that, obviously the examiner will fail you for that for moving off. So if you stall the car once, don't assume you failed. You secure the car by putting the handbrake on and then move off safely, okay? But obviously, if you repeat, repeat and repeat, then you will fail your test for that, okay? So these are the reasons why learners are failing in the test when they are moving off. I hope this video helps and I hope to see you on the next episode on reasons for failing the driving test in the UK. Please do give a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again on the next video. And welcome to another video on reasons for failing the driving test. And this is episode three. And on this video, we are talking about poor positioning. Many learners, they fail the driving test because their normal position is poor or is incorrect when they are driving. So in this video, I'm gonna cover why learners are failing for poor positioning. Let's start the lesson. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples of why learners are failing for poor positioning when they are doing their driving test, okay? So first of all, we know that in England, we drive on the left-hand side, okay? In the UK, we drive on the left, 
other parts of the world uh, they drive on the right like America France and so on but here in the UK we drive on the left so first thing you need to know that we drive on the left hand side secondly when you drive on the left you need to make sure that you drive in the middle of your lane okay basically around one meter away from the pavement basically around in the middle of your lane okay that's where you should be positioning when you're driving on a normal driving so not too close to the pavement and not too close to the center line okay if you go too close to the pavement then you are risking the pedestrians walking on the pavement and if you go too close to the center line then you are causing the oncoming traffic to move over to the other side okay so first of all you need to position in the middle of your lane okay if there are parked cars then you need to make sure you give them space going around giving them one door space so if they open the door you shouldn't touch your car okay so when you go around make sure you give them one door space you need to go over and go round okay giving that car one door space obviously before going round make sure you look around look at the top and right mirror and make sure there's no one coming and then you go around giving them one door space one other thing before coming back again many learners when they come back they come back really quickly and too close to the parked car make sure you go a little bit further and then come around so giving them enough space so basically as you go around make sure you don't go too close you go around and come back giving all around enough space for that parked car if there are plenty of parked cars okay you go around and stay away from the parked cars one meter or door space and keep going and come back again if you go park cars on the other side as well then you drive middle of the road okay you drive in the middle giving them space giving them space you drive in the middle don't be too close and don't be too much over on the other side so in the middle what if you drive on a dual carriageway okay if you drive on a dual carriageway you should always drive on the left lane remember left lane is always the normal driving lane okay for any reason if you do need to go to the other lane maybe because there's road work or maybe because the car in front is too slow so you overtake you go to the right lane or the second lane in this case and then after you overtaken the car maybe the slow car you must come back to your lane again when it's safe to do so okay so you always drive on the left lane unless you need to go to the other lane for any reason because road works or the car in front is too slow you go to the other lane and then you must come back to your lane again because if you stay in that lane too long and you could have come back it was safe to come back and you didn't come back you will fail your test for that why because left lane is normal driving lane and the other lanes are for overtaking and going right okay is either overtake or going right is for the other lanes left lane is always normal driving lane like I said if you do need to go to the other lanes make sure you come back to your lane soon as possible meaning one is safe to do so now on a roundabout many learners they fail because sometimes the roundabout doesn't have a road markings okay inside there is no road marking now because there is no road marking you still have to maintain the lane that you need okay so for example you need to go straight this is your car and you want to go straight which means you need the left lane now for you to use the left lane make sure there is no road marking so when you enter the roundabout make sure you make your own lane many learners they fail because they just go across and you can't do that you have to make your own lane just because there's no road marking it doesn't mean you're just gonna go across you still have to go round making your own lane and then come out okay so let me repeat many learners on the roundabout with no road markings they don't go round they just go across and they don't make their own lane and like I said straight ahead you need the left lane make sure you enter and make your own lane going round if you go straight over you will fail your test for that 
now here on your drive uh, make sure you drive in the middle of your lane not too close to the pavement not too close to the center line especially when you're going around maintain staying in the middle of your lane one of the problem the learners make in the test in regards to positioning and they fail the test is because they don't stay in the middle of their lane they either drive too close to the pavement on the left or they drive too close to the center line on the right so make sure you drive in the middle if you drive too close to the left you are risking for pedestrians and if you drive too close to the right near to the center line then you are risking for oncoming traffic so make sure you maintain and drive in the middle of your lane on the left when you have parked cars give them one door space okay so you're giving one door space to parked cars when you have parked cars on both sides you drive in the middle of your road okay giving enough space to your left and enough space to your right so you drive in the middle of your road now the other problem the learners make is that when you have parked cars on both sides like here and the gaps are bigger from one to another try not to go in and come out because you know there is another part car coming up for example here you know there's a part car it's no point going in and then coming out okay if you see there is no part car then yes you must come back to your side like here you come back to your side and you drive but normally if you see another part car coming up don't go in and come out because that's going to confuse other drivers now just to give you an example so you don't get confused what I mean is that if you have parked cars on both sides or maybe one side, you drive in the middle, giving them space, giving them space. And then when you see gaps, try not to go in and come out because you know there's another parked car here. If you think there is no parked car here at all, then yes, you must come back to your lane and drive as normal. But if you keep on having parked cars and the gaps are not too big it's no point going in and coming out because the car behind is going to get confused thinking maybe you want to park here okay so what i'm saying is if the gaps are smaller in between parked cars don't go in and come out all the time only go in if the parked car is quite further away maybe the gap is quite long gap and the parked car is quite far away or there's no part car over there then it's okay go into your side which you have to go into your side but like i said if the part cars are near to each other don't keep going in and coming out okay that's going to confuse others now here i am driving on a dual carriageway with three lanes which means that i must drive on the left lane because that's the normal driving lane so like i said this is a dual carriageway with three lanes and which lane am i driving in the left lane because that's the normal driving lane but if there is a place i need to go which means that i might need the middle lane which means i will change lane to the middle by looking at the mirrors signal blind spot i change and the reason now i'm driving in the middle is because the place i need to go i need the middle lane but i must come back to my lane again when i've gone to the place i need to go okay as you can see here I'm going over the flyover and now it's two lane which means I need to drive on the left lane out of the two why because that's a normal driving lane but after the flyover if there is another lane joins and my one becomes middle I must go back to my left lane again why because left lane is for normal driving lane as you can see here the flyover is nearly finishing and I can see there is another lane joining can you see yes there's another lane on the left which means i'm going to end up in the middle lane what do i do soon as it's safe to do so i must go back to my left lane okay i look at the mirror look at the blind spot put the signal on obviously and go to my left lane why because that is the normal driving lane if i don't come back to my lane again and it's safe to do so i will fail my test so make sure when it's safe you must come back to your left lane again now to give you another example i'm driving on the dual carriageway here and if you look at the sign here i want to follow city center which means i need the right lane the left lane doesn't take me to city center which means now i have to change lane to the middle lane for me to follow city center so i look at the mirrors put the signal on blind spot i go to the middle lane 
The reason I'm in the middle lane is because I am following a sign which is city center, which means left lane doesn't take me to city center. I need the middle lane. So I'm following the middle lane and I'm going to be going over a flyover in a minute, as you will see. So that's the flyover and out of the two, I'm driving on the left lane. Why? Because that's the normal driving lane. I'm still driving on the flyover. As the flyover finishes, I want you to see what happens to my lane. Okay, as you can see here, I can see another lane joining from the left. Can you see? There's a road joining, which means my lane is now middle. What do I need to do? I need to go back to my left lane. If I don't, I will fail my test. But obviously, it has to be safe to do so. Look at the mirror, put the signal on and change lane. So the point I'm trying to make here is that left lane is always normal driving lane. For any reason, you need to go to the other lanes, middle lane or third lane. You must come back to your left lane again when it's safe to do so. Because if you don't and you stay too long on the other lane and you don't come back when it's safe to do so, you will fail your test. Okay. Now, some roundabout doesn't have lane markings or it doesn't have any road markings, which means you must make your own lane, as you can see here. So if you are going straight, which lane do you normally need? You need the left lane, okay? When you enter the roundabout, make sure you maintain going towards left, making your own lane. This is important because if you don't and you just go over straight, you will fail your test for that, okay? So here, going straight, you need the left lane. So make your own lane going round, okay? This is episode four. And in this video, we're gonna talk about not moving off safely. Many learners, they're failing the test because they don't move off safely. So in this video, we're going to talk about not move off safely. Hopefully, you will learn from this and hopefully you won't be the person who is failing for not moving off safely in the driving test. Let's start the lesson. In your driving test, the driving examiner will ask you to stop somewhere safe on the left and then move off safely. The examiner want to see after you've stopped on the left, can you move off safely? Also, the examiner will ask you to stop somewhere safe on the left behind a car close to it and then move off to see whether if you could move off safely. Also, there's one maneuver you might have to do, which is stop on the right hand side, reverse to a car and then move off safely. Why? Because the examiner want to see if you could move off safely from the right hand side and then come to your normal driving position and drive on. So these are the situation where the examiner will ask you to stop and then move off to see if you could move off safely. So let's talk about when you stop somewhere safe on the left. Okay. So the examiner said for you to stop somewhere safe on the left. So you did. You stopped, you looked at the mirrors, you put the signal on and you stopped. Humbrick on, neutral and you stopped. Okay. And now the examiner said for you to move off. The reason learners are failing is either because they don't look at the blind spot before they move off, or they did look at the blind spot, but there was a car coming which they didn't see, or maybe they did see, but the gap wasn't big enough. And as they moved off, the car has to slow down for them. So this is one of the reasons why the learners are failing. Number one, for not looking at the blind spot, many learners actually, they fail the driving test for moving off safely because they don't look at the blind spot. So number one, make sure look at the blind spot. Number two, as you move off, if there is a car, make sure the gap is there for you to go. If you go front of them and they slow down for you, you will fail your test for moving off safely. The other one is the examiner might ask you to stop on the right hand side of the road, reverse to a car back, and then they will ask you to move off to the left and come back to your normal driving position. And this is where many learners, they fail. Why? Because they need to look ahead and they need to look who's coming over there. So you have to look both sides. If there is a car coming or a car coming and there is no enough space for you to go or the gap isn't big enough, don't go yet. Wait 
until you find the right gap. It doesn't mean to say that the gap is there and you're not going. All I'm saying is that you have to find the right gap, okay? If you don't, you go and there's a car coming and they have to slow down for you, you will fail your test for that, okay? So make sure the gap is there for you to go. The other thing the examiner might ask you to do is to do an emergency stop, okay? So the examiner will ask you to stop somewhere safe on the left and then they're gonna say, now we're gonna do an exercise of emergency stop, okay? Now, after the emergency stop, many learners, they don't look all around before they go. This is really important because you're gonna be in the middle of your lane, make sure after you've done the emergency stop, obviously put the handbrake on neutral and you wait, and then when the examiner said for you to move off, make sure you look all around, blind spot, and then you move off, okay? So before you move off, look all around, including the top mirror, side mirror, blind spot, and then you move off. Many learners, after the emergency stop, they fail because they don't do a full check, the blind spot and the top mirror to see who's coming at the back, okay? So after the emergency stop, make sure you look all around, including your blind spot. So just to recap, when you stop on the left, before you move off, make sure the blind spot is checked properly and make sure if there is a car coming, you have enough gap for you to go. Don't miss the car. Also, don't go front of someone that they have to slow down for you, okay? If you stop on the right-hand side before you move off again, make sure you look at the front and at the back and make sure there's no one coming. If there is, make sure the gap is enough for you to go so that they don't have to slow down for you. After the emergency stop, make sure you look all around including your blind spot, top mirror to see behind before you go. Don't go without looking full circle after the emergency stop. So these are the reasons why the learners are failing for not doing when they are moving off. So hopefully this video will now help you to understand why the learners are failing for not moving off safely. And welcome to episode five on reasons for failing the driving test. And in this video, we are talking about incorrect positioning turning right. Many learners, they fail the driving test because their positioning is wrong when they want to turn right. So let's start the lesson. Now firstly, one of our signal when we are driving the car is the position of our car. Our position tells a lot to the other drivers what we are doing especially when we are turning right. If you want to turn right, you want to make sure that your car becomes a signal for others so that they know what we are doing. If we need to go right, our car needs to be on the right hand side. So the car is behind and everyone else knows that what we are doing. And number two, we shouldn't position in a way so we are distracting others or blocking others and they can't go. So number one, the learners are failing for, for wrong positioning, turning right, is on a roundabout. On a roundabout, if you need to go right, you need to be in the right-hand lane. Many learners, they use the left lane to go right, and they are failing the test for that. So on the roundabout, if you need to go right, the exit that you are going, if it falls after 12 o'clock, meaning it's a right, you need to be in the right lane. Many learners, they fail because, like I said, they use the left lane and not the right lane. To go right on the roundabout, you need the right lane. Number two, when you are driving on a road and you want to go right, you need to make sure that you position towards right, meaning left of center, not on the other side of the road, but on your side, but closer to the middle, meaning the center line. You are closer to that. Why? So that if you need to wait, for the oncoming traffic, cars behind could carry on going. If they can't and there are cars coming and you are waiting and you are blocking others because your position is too much on the left, you will fail your test for that. So when you're turning right from a road into a minor road and you are waiting for the oncoming traffic, make sure that if the road is wide enough, you are on the right hand side, not on the other side, like I said, left of center meaning closer to the middle, still on your side, so that the cars behind could carry on going while you are waiting for the oncoming traffic. The other thing is when you go to the end of the road and you want to go right, many learners, they wait too much on the left. And the problem with that is you are signaling right, 
but the position of your car is telling others that you want to go left or straight so make sure to go right at the end of the road you are closer to the middle meaning to the center line and you are waiting towards right and not on the left so that cars behind could carry on straight or left also your car becomes a signal for others that that is what you are trying to do you want to go right many learners they fail because they position too much on the left so just to give you more understanding when you're turning right regards to position so imagine you want to go right from here and you want to go over there okay this is where you are going the road is wide enough it's big road okay you need to position left of center towards right meaning here you want to go there and this is your position you need to wait here if you need to so say you need to wait here because there are cars coming if there are cars coming you need to wait now if you wait here on the wrong position say you're waiting here the cars behind not going to be able to go that's the problem you need to position there so that cars could go okay so if you position here so the cars behind carry on going while you are waiting for oncoming traffic so your position is to be there many learners they don't go there they position maybe in the middle and they're blocking the cars behind while they were waiting that's one of the problem the other problem is say this way you are coming at the end you want to go right okay you want to go right at the end many learners they position towards here and they do that okay whereas your position should be towards there that's where your position should be why one because your car becomes a signal number two cars behind could go wherever they want to go you're not blocking the others okay so the bottom line is that if you are turning right number one you need to signal and number two your position needs to be in a way so that you don't distract others you're not blocking others also your car becomes the signal for others looking at your car towards right people will know that you are turning right also you won't be blocking others because your position is already on the right and the cars behind could carry on going so these are the reasons why the learners are failing for wrong positioning or incorrect positioning when turning right i hope this video helps if it does please do give a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe so don't miss any of my future videos and welcome to episode 6 on reasons for failing the driving test and in this episode we are talking about effective observations at junctions many learners they fail the driving test because their observation is bad when they are dealing with junctions so in this video i'm going to give you the, the reasons why learners are failing at junctions for bad observations let's start the lesson number one is when you are approaching a major road from a minor road the cars on major road has priority if there are cars coming on the major road you have to wait and give them away if there are cars coming and the distance is there for you to go you can go but the problem is many learners they fail to judge the speed of the other cars and this is when they are failing the driving test okay so when you go to the end and you have to give way to cars on major road make sure if there are cars make sure you know that you have enough space for you to go if you fail to judge the speed of the approaching traffic or approaching cars you will fail your test for that number two when you are approaching a roundabout when you are approaching a roundabout you must give way on your right if there are cars coming on your right and if you think the distance is there for you to go you should go but many learners they fail because they can't judge the distance the speed of the other car because of that they will fail the test for that because the other cars has to slow down for them okay so on the roundabout you look on your right and if there are cars make sure your judgment is good knowing that do i have enough space for me to go if you fail to judge the speed of the other car you will fail your test for that third is that again when you are approaching a major road from a minor road many learners they actually fail to look both way they just enter without looking and there's cars coming and they had to do an emergency stop 
because you've just went front of them obviously you know you will fail your test for that okay so like i said before one is to judge the speed of the other car and the other is to actually do the observation if there are cars coming many learners they fail to do that they just go without looking properly and there are cars coming and obviously you will fail your test for that next is when you are joining a dual carriageway so when you are joining a dual carriageway from a slip road you have to make sure that you have a good observation knowing if there are cars already on the dual carriageway because if there is they have priority they shouldn't need to slow down or stop for you so you need to look early do a good observation and see if there are already cars on the dual carriageway because if there is you have to make sure you know whether you need to slow down or stop because of them next is when you are approaching a crossroad and you need to go straight from a minor road to another minor road ahead and your observation is bad you don't recognize there is a crossroad there many learners when they go straight on a crossroad they fail to recognize there is a crossroad there if you're coming from a minor road and then you need to go across to the next minor road on the other side you need to give way to cars on the main road many learners they fail to even recognize there is a crossroad there so when you're approaching a crossroad make sure you know there is a crossroad which you need to give way to cars coming on the main road next is when you are turning left from a minor road into a busy major road to turn left you must make sure that you look early and see if there is a problem on your left because without looking properly there could be a problem there could be either parked cars there could be crossings there could be traffic light there could be people crossing the road these are the hazard you might face on your turning left and if you don't look early soon as you enter you will be in trouble so make sure that before you turn left from a minor into a major look left early if there is a hazard if there is a problem because if there is then you deal with that problem before you enter and the other problem many learners is that when you are approaching a junction to go left or to go right make sure you look early and make sure you recognize there is a junction coming and look early and make a decision early whether you're going to go and stop many learners they fail because the observation is bad sometimes the gap is there for them to go but they just go and stop anyway without looking early enough so make sure you look early make your judgment whether you can go or not many learners like i said they fail because they don't look early and they are not making decisions early because the observation is bad so these are the reasons why the learners are failing on junctions for not having good observations on junctions i hope this helps and welcome to episode 7 on reasons for failing the driving test and in this video we are talking about traffic light many learners they fail the driving test for responding incorrectly on traffic lights so in this video i will be giving you the reasons why learners are failing on traffic lights hopefully after watching this video you won't be failing on traffic lights let's start the lesson so imagine this is the traffic light these are the lights and you are approaching this way okay if it's red you stop behind the stop line simple make sure you stop behind the stop line not on the stop line many learners they stop on the stop line also many learners even if it's red they try to proceed so make sure if it's red stop behind the stop line that's number one number two if it's green and there's a car coming here what do you do you go halfway and you stop here okay you stop here for this car while it is green when they go you proceed many learners one they don't go to the middle they stay behind the line you will fail your test for that two they go to the middle and while they were waiting the traffic light becomes red and now they don't proceed anymore they stay where they are make sure if you've already crossed the line and you are waiting for this car when this car is gone even if it goes to red you must proceed because you are not behind the stop line this stop line and this traffic light is not for you anymore because you went there while it was green now it is red while you are in the middle you should go because you are blocking the road the other problem is many learners when the traffic light is green 
and there's a car in front goes to the middle, you are behind them. If you feel you have the space to go behind and you will pass the stop line, then you should go and stop behind that car. If you feel there is no space, then you stop behind the stop line. Okay? When they go, if it's green, then you go. If it's red, you stay behind because you are behind the stop line. Okay? Now let me repeat that again. If there's a car already waiting while it is green, now it is your choice to go behind this car. You only go behind them if the space is there for you to go. If there's no space, stop behind the stop line. If there is a space, go there. If you go there and it's red, when they go, you should be going as well. If you stop behind the stop line and now it goes to red after green, you stop because you are still behind the stop line. I hope this is clear for you. The other problem is there could be another stop line here and this part is for cyclists. So when you approach the traffic light and it's red, make sure you stop behind here. Don't go there because this area is not for you, it's for cyclists. Many learners, they go and stop there and they will fail the test for that. Okay, so if there's a stop line here, cyclist, you stop behind the cyclist. Don't go there. You only go there if there is no area for cyclists. The other problem when they are waiting in the middle is when you are waiting here to go right for this car, make sure you don't go too much. Many learners, they end up going too much. Make sure you stop halfway. So then you want to go right. If this car wants to go right, they have this space. If you go too much, then you are blocking the junction. Okay? You only go half of the junction because the other half is for the other side okay many learners they end up going too much and wait around here that's too much okay and welcome to another episode on reasons for failing the driving test and in this video we are talking about not responding correctly to traffic signs so in this video we will talk about why learners are failing for not correctly responding to traffic signs let's start the lesson Firstly, stop signs and no entry signs. Many learners, when they see a stop line or a stop sign, what does that mean? It means that you go and you stop, see if it's safe and then you go. Many learners, they fail to stop fully on a stop sign or on a stop line and they fail the driving test for that. Remember, when you go to a junction and you have a stop sign or a stop line, what does that mean? It means that you go and you stop fully and then you check if it's safe and then you go. Many learners, like I said, they ignore and they don't stop fully. Also, the other one learners ignore or they miss is no entry sign. Mostly at the end of one way street, you will have a no entry sign. And if you need to make any turning going left, going right, or even going straight, make sure you know if there is a no entry sign. Don't enter if there is a no entry sign. Many learners, they miss that. Next is the bus lane. Now, can you drive on a bus lane? You could only drive on a bus lane if there is a time limit on the bus lane. Some bus lanes, you can drive on it, but mostly you can't. So make sure if the bus lane is telling you not to drive on it because of the time, make sure you don't drive on the bus lane. Many learners, they miss the sign or they just ignore and they try to drive on the bus lane. Now, there is a difference between bus lane and bus stop. Many learners, they do get confused on that as well. If it's a bus stop, you can't drive on it. But if it's a bus lane, then you can't drive on it. Make sure you know the difference, okay? Many learners, they do miss that as well. You can't drive on a bus stop, but you can't park on the bus stop. You could drive on it. On a bus lane, you can't drive. The next one is the roundabout. When you are approaching a roundabout and it's telling you clearly by road signs which lane you need to be, but you miss that. Many learners, they miss the sign and they go into the wrong lane for them to go wherever they are going. So when you approach the roundabout, make sure you recognize the sign and you understand what the sign is telling you where you need to be for you to go wherever you are going. And just to add to that, one of the things about the roundabout is that if you need to go straight ahead, you need the left lane, right? But sometimes the left lane is not going straight. 
it's only going left many learners they miss that and they enter into the left lane to go straight when the left lane is not actually going straight it's only going left and they try to go straight from that lane so make sure you recognize that as well when you are approaching a roundabout next is one of the most common many learners they miss that is the is the speed sign the speed limit sign so when you're driving make sure you recognize the speed of the road because the sign is telling you what speed of the road you are driving on sometimes they miss the sign totally and the other time they recognize the speed just changed from maybe 30 to 40 or from 40 to 30 and they are not responding to the sign quick enough they're taking too long so for example you are driving on a 30 and it's now 60 or maybe it's 40 but by the time you go to 40 when it's clear you're just taking it too long okay so if the speed changes make sure you respond according to the road sign okay don't miss the sign also don't take it too long for you to drive the road speed if the road is safe you should be driving the road speed whatever the road speed is so these are the most common problems the learners are failing on traffic signs and my advice to you would be to drive and read the road the way you are going i say that many times i have said this before in my other videos and i'm telling you again is make sure when you are driving make sure you read the road unless you read you're going to miss all the signs you're going to miss the stop sign the giveaway sign the no entry sign the speed sign you're going to miss all of that and if you miss you will fail your test for that so make sure you read the road and see what the road is telling you especially when you are entering a new road because when you enter a new road it tells you in the beginning what is the speed of that road if it doesn't say anything it means it continues from the speed you have been driving if it's going to change it's going to change where the road just started okay that's it for this video and i hope it helps and welcome to another episode of reasons for failing the driving test and in this video we are talking about the reasons the learners are failing the driving test for reverse parking so the reasons learners failing the driving test for reverse parking is what we are going to talk about in this video let's start the lesson okay so when we talk about reverse parking we are talking about the parallel parking as well as the bay parking so we are talking about the reverse into a bay also the parallel parking where you stop alongside of a car and then you reverse behind that car which is known as also parallel parking so it's the parallel parking and also the bay parking we are talking about in this video why learners are failing the driving test on those parkings number one when they are doing the parallel parking many learners when they finish the parallel parking they need to finish reasonably close to the pavement when they finish so your examiner will ask you to stop alongside of a car and then reverse behind that car on the left hand side okay so when you finish you have to make sure that the front or the back or both side of your car is not on the pavement you need to make sure it's close to the pavement but not on the pavement if you are on the pavement you will fail your test for that many learners they end up going on the pavement and they fail the test on the parallel parking the other reason many learners are failing is when they are doing these parking maybe they couldn't do it in one go okay maybe they got the method wrong and they couldn't do it in one go the question is can you correct of course you can you could go forward and you could correct but many learners they are failing because they are doing it too many times okay obviously you were allowed to correct so you could go forward you could correct your parking but it doesn't mean to say that you're going to be doing it too many times okay so you need to make sure that you correct but don't do it too many times if you do it too many times what does it mean it means that you need more practice on that parking and you will fail your test for that the other reason the many learners are failing on reverse parking is losing the control of the car they don't control the car or they lose the control of the car when they are doing the parallel parking or the reverse bay parking now losing the control what does that mean you need to demonstrate if you're going reversing you could control the car if it's on a flat road if it's on a downhill if it's on a uphill so wherever the parking you are doing the situation of the road will depend on how you control the car so if you are doing on a manual car and if the road is 
downhill or uphill it will depend on how you control the car with your clutch is it the clutch control you need or is it the brake control you need also the steering many learners they get confused with the steering they do one left or one right and then for them to get a straight they forget where the wheel is and you lose the control and they lose the control of the car so it's very important that you demonstrate that you are in control and you are controlling the car with full understanding what's happening with the wheel and also the clutch control or the brake control depending on the situation of the road so losing control of your car you will fail your test for that and many they do fail for that reason the other reason on a bay parking is many learners they go into a bay and it's not within the line it's not in the bay so maybe they've done it in one go and they finished and it's not in the bay so what do you do if it's not in the bay do you just stay there or do you go forward and correct make sure if you need to do the bay parking in the test make sure you go into the bay and you look on the side mirrors to see if he's in the bay if he's not in the bay make sure you go forward and you correct if you go forward you come back make sure it's within the line okay you shouldn't finish outside the line many learners they fail for that because it's not within the line so these are the reasons why the learners are failing the driving test for reverse parking now you might be thinking do i have to do both of them in the test no you will only be doing one okay now there are four parkings for you to learn for the driving test as you know one is parallel parking the other one is you stop on the right hand side reversed and then you move off and the other two is on the bay parking one of them is to reverse into a bay and the other one is to go forward into a bay these are the four but you'll only do one in the test so don't get confused when i say parallel parking and the bay parking in this video does it mean that you have to do both of them no you will be doing one what i mean whichever you do just make sure that you don't fail for you know the reasons i've just given you in this video i hope this video helps okay that's it for this video and i hope this video helps and if there is something you need help or you have a question please do make a comment and i will try to answer to help you on that also i am helping learners on other platforms like tiktok facebook and instagram if you want to follow us on those platforms, make sure you do i will leave a link on the description for you to follow us on those platforms. thank you for watching and hope to see you again on the next video bye for now